divine truths frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session one. Question 10. Mm. Can spirits be dangerous? Well, they can be dangerous as much as any person can be dangerous. So again, we need to see spirits as just people whom we cannot see, but who are still alive and in a, in a, have a body. They have a soul, they therefore have motivations and, and obviously emotions. And just as any other person on earth would have, they have the ability to use those particular, their will, their, their emotions and their desires and their motivations in a manner that's quite against our own survival even. So yes, they can be very dangerous. They can be just as dangerous as a person on earth can be. And in some cases, potentially more dangerous given the fact that we can't see their influence sometimes. So they can even be potentially more dangerous sometimes than a person on earth could be. Because a, on a person on earth, normally when we see them as a dangerous person, we have a tendency, the majority of people on earth would have a tendency to avoid them. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's sometimes difficult to avoid a spirit who has the same malevolent desires and intentions. So for that reason, a spirit can often be even more dangerous than a dangerous person on earth. So if I think about a dangerous person on earth, mm -hmm. I think, well, a dangerous person on earth could kill me. Yes. Can a spirit kill me? Certainly. How can a spirit kill me? Um, there's a number of ways a spirit can kill you. Firstly, they can influence you to take decisions which would destroy your own life. Secondly, they can have certain attachments to your physical body through addictive things that you have in relationship to the spirit that cause the degradation of certain organs in your body that it finishes up take it, taking your life. And in fact, there are many diseases associated with spirit influence, that physical diseases that occur in that manner. So they could kill you through a disease, for example. They could kill you through an action that you take. They can also kill you by, you know, dropping thoughts into your mind to harm yourself. Mm. And there are many spirits who do this with people who potentially finish up you know, suiciding and who are potentials to suicide. Uh, because of certain emotions that we're trying to deny within ourselves that we want to run away from, the spirits can manipulate those particular uh, thoughts in that direction and finish up causing us to kill ourselves mm. even. So there are many so-called suicides that are actually murders that have been instigated usually through the action of different spirits. So there is also spirits can take actions to influence people in power to harm groups of people using violent methods. Uh, spirits can also motivate people who are rapists or, uh, or other type of people who have other types of sexual anger in order to take out their sexual anger on another person. Mm -hmm. So there is a lot of very, very, and, and pedophilia is often and most often uh, de generated and governed by spirits in terms of the interfer interference of a person through their own emotional injuries relating to sexuality and then spirits motivate them to do things that are not a part of what society would consider loving behaviour or normal behaviour mm -hmm. and then people take those particular actions. There is mass murderers that have been totally influenced by spirits who have murdered other people. There have been people who are leaders of governments, such as Hitler and Stalin, who have been influenced by spirits to murder large numbers of people. Mm. And so, yes, there's a, a, the, these spirits are very dangerous or can be very dangerous. I don't know if I would say that they are any more dangerous than the average person on earth, uh, though, because although we can't see them, in the end, we can only be motivated by our own unhealed emotional injuries to act on their behalf or to do things towards ourselves or to others that would harm us. So the reality is that uh, if we work our way through the way in which these spirits can manipulate or control us, then the spirits have no level of control over us and in fact are unable to control us, uh, far, are, are only able to control us far less than the average person on earth could control us. So in other words, I suppose another way of saying that is if we have worked through all of our emotional injuries that in interfere with spirit, that cause spirit interference and spirit influence upon our lives, then it, we're like walking around with no influence from any person in the spirit world upon us. It doesn't matter that we can't see them. They cannot influence us at all. Mm -hmm. 
Of course, a person on Earth could still influence us under those circumstances because we're in a physical body and therefore they could take a violent action towards us or something like that which might harm us. But a spirit couldn't do so. Right, so a spirit, so this is the difference. If I'm walking down a dark alley mm -hmm. and you have very dark, dark intentions, intentions... And I want to either murder you or rape you. Yep. yep. Um, you can murder me or rape me because we're in the same alley. And if I'm strong enough, physically strong enough, or I have a method of uh, f physically manipulating your fear, so I have a gun or a knife or some other weapon mm -hmm. and, and I have a method of manipulating your fear, then there's a high likelihood I'll get away with the action in, in the instance. Okay. But you, you just said if I have healed emotionally mm -hmm. um, and I'm walking down the same dark alley and there's no people around mm -hmm. but there could be spirits who wish to do me harm, mm -hmm. if I've healed myself emotionally, mm -hmm. um, which is perhaps the subject of another mm -hmm. um, set of questions, mm -hmm. then I'm safe. Yes, from completely those safe. They have, would have no ability to harm you at all in that circumstance. The only way that they could harm you is by influencing another. But the way God's created your soul through its emotional injuries is that you, any person who tries to influence another towards you has to also be sensitive to the same emotional injury. So it's highly unlikely that you would have any damage occur to you, either from a person in the spirit world or on earth, walking down the dark alley once all of your emotional injuries are healed. Mm. Mm. Okay. They have to take a person under those circumstances would have to take direct action to to harm you through their own motivation and through no other motivation. Which person is this? The person who chooses to harm you uh -huh. would have to take. Uh, see, unfortunately, on the earth at the moment, much harm is occurs because spirit, it's spirit influenced harm. Once we've healed the spirit influence, the, the openness to the spirit influence, the only harm, harm that can actually occur on the earth is a harm where the person uses their own individual will to harm another. And, and that would be uninfluenced. Mm -hmm. So therefore it would be highly unlikely to be as violent or as, or as negative as it would be when it's influenced. So if we go back to the dark alley mm -hmm. and I'm me, a woman, walking down, down the, the dark, dark alley, alley with a lot of fear for example, of, of, um, of sexual violence, yes. for example. It's highly likely under those circumstances you'll attract a heap of spirits, at least, while you're walking down the dark alley. Yeah. Now, they will start being threatening towards you. And if they can find a man who's willing to be the same as they are, it's highly likely you would be attacked under those circumstances. Well, and this was, this was my um, question. So if I'm walking down the alley with some sexual fear, I'm unhealed emotionally, mm -hmm. And you are a man, in this example, walking down the alley, coming towards me, who has some feelings of rage towards women yep. that you haven't healed. Yes. Then you would be open to and the influence. And a possible ten tendency towards violence. So right. I'd have to have a possible tendency. I'd have to have a tendency towards a violence. A tendency towards violence. Then those spirits could influence you to harm Certainly. me. I could, it could be just an opportunistic event. Yep. Taken in the spur of a moment by my being influenced by spirits who are with me, who have the same opportunistic emotions mm -hmm. um, that cause your physical harm. And then if you were to change that scenario um, where there was no spirits influencing you, mm -hmm. are you saying that you would have to have healed all your anger with women and propensity f for violence for spirits to not influence you in that scenario? Yes. Yeah. And, and in which case you wouldn't take an action to harm me, would you? Exactly, I wouldn't, yeah. no matter how much influence was brought to bear. Yeah. In addition, if you had healed your fear of sexual violence, like, sexual violence and yeah. sexual rage, then you could walk down that same alley, even though I have that uh, particular tendency, mm -hmm. and the spirits who, are, who would normally be able to influence me wouldn't be able to influence me in your company. Mm. So the only decision I can take would be my own. Mm -hmm. I see, yes. Yes. So that makes you can sense. see, under those circumstances, there would be a large reduction in the amount of violence that occurs on the earth if we had healed these particular injuries. And it also shows that if I heal myself emotionally, the potential danger from spirits, even if other people haven't healed themselves, exactly. is vastly reduced. Vastly reduced. Because now you've protected yourself and protected the other person, in fact. Mm. Who, any person who comes into contact with you is protected when they're with you. 
to a degree, and it's only their own emotional injuries which, which can influence them after that point. Mm. So they can only make a decision on their own, mm -hmm. not with, uh, uh, or it can be with a group of people on earth, obviously. So if it was a gang of men coming along, they could make the decision as a gang, mm -hmm. is that they are together and they're in the physical. But if it's a gang of spirits with a man, then that gang of spirits cannot influence the man if you're in a state where you're healed emotionally. It's only the man who can make the choice mm. and decision. And is that part of God's laws operating in a loving way? If yes. I take the initiative to heal myself emotionally of these damages or mm -hmm. these fears, then God's provision is then my interaction is then just with the soul of that person in front of me physically. And Correct. There is actually like literally a barrier or a protection from other spirit influence on me in that Correct. way. Yeah. Correct. So a person who becomes at one with God can only pass now through the direct decisions made by people who are on the earth with the person mm. that are out of harmony with love. They cannot pass through spirit influence, you know, yep. because the spirits will not be influencing it. So, for example, in my death in the first century... The reality is that all the people who made the choice to kill me in the first century made the choice through their own decision and it wasn't motivated by dark spirits. Mm. That's the interesting thing. Yeah. So this included Judas, the person who betrayed me at the time. It included the Sanhedrin who condemned me. All of those people have had to pay the penalty of their own personal decisions that have been uninfluenced by others mm. when they killed me. Mm. Whereas that's very unusual on earth. Most times... People are influenced by other spirits to do particular things. And, of course, the spirits bear part of the penalty of making the choice and decision. Mm -hmm. In the case of a person who becomes at one with God, only the person who is making the choice and decision can make the choice and decision because your soul protects them from being influenced by any other influence other than their own will. Mm. Mm. Very interesting. So it's a very interesting... Uh, it also, it, this, of course, means that you reduce the amount of uh, difficulties to, towards yourself once you become at one with God mm -hmm. or even approach that condition in terms of what harm can be brought to bear towards you. But you also protect the people around you from being influenced by negative spirits when they're with you. <laughs> Only when they're with you, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, I'm finding, what I find happens now with my life is that quite often I, I get negative attacks for, from people who are not with me. But as soon as they're with me, all of the negativity disappears for the time they're with me. Mm -hmm. Of course, when they go away from me, then the negativity reappears because I no longer am providing that protection to the person who's being influenced. And this happens all the time in our life, as you know, yes. where when people are with me, we have sensible <laughs> conversations without any anger and rage and without any problem. And as soon as they leave me, then we start having difficulties with that same person in many cases, mm -hmm. uh, where they'll be violent or abusive or send us abusive emails. And, and yet when they're with us, they act completely differently. And that's because of this same principle or law that's in operation. Mm. Mm. Mm.